Okay, the last functional group we're going to talk about is a functional group that combines both carbon and, excuse me, combines adding both oxygen and nitrogen. So we've talked about oxygen containing functional groups. I hope you can remember those alcohols. R O H ethers carbon oxygen carbon we've talked about aldehydes where the carbon oxygen double bond is the central feature and they have carbon group connected to the carbonyl connected to hydrogen. We have ketones, where both groups attached to the carbon oxygen double bond are carbon groups. We've talked about carboxylic acids, in which we've added two carbons, excuse me, two oxygens. And we've got the carbon oxygen oxygen combination connected to hydrogen and then finally we've talked about esters where we have again that same combination carbon oxygen double bond connected to oxygen now connected to another carbon group and again just to review to show you the similarities and patterns as we look at the central focal point of each of these functional groups you notice that each pair of functional groups differs only by what's connected to the central focus. Carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, or carbon, 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 carbon. So nice patterns around that central focus. So we've got some central piece and then it's either hydrogen and carbon or it's carbon and carbon. Hope that makes some sense to you. Okay, so now our last functional group, um, really important functional group in biological systems, particularly in protein molecules. And this functional group is called the amide group or amide group, depending upon how you want to pronounce it. I guess it officially should be a pronounced amide, but a lot of people call it amide. Good. The amide group contains both oxygen and nitrogen. And here's what it looks like. It has the carbon-oxygen double bond. Okay, we've seen that before. But now that carbon-oxygen double bond on one side is connected to a nitrogen. Now if we think about it, every carbon must have four bonds. So right now we see three bonds in the carbon. So there has to be something connected here. Okay. And then nitrogen has to have three bonds. So there has to be something connected there. So the key part of an amide is this carbon oxygen double bond connected to the nitrogen. So there's the central focus there. And you're not surprised, the question marks in the simplest amide, in the simplest amide, all of the question marks equal what? Of course, hydrogen, our simplest atom. So our simplest amide would be this one. We replace all of those question marks with hydrogens. Okay. And there's our simplest amide. Okay. Now, you're not surprised if you want a complicated amide, what are you going to do? You're going to replace those question marks with groups other than hydrogen. And guess what those groups are going to be? They're going to be carbon groups. So if we wanted to sort of draw a general formula for an amide, a general formula for a mid would show something like this. Then we've got our central feature of the amid. And then I know I've got to have some connection here, so I'm going to designate that R sub A. 
where that could be a hydrogen, but more likely, more possibilities are that it'll be a carbon group. And then over here, I could have a carbon group or a hydrogen group. And here, I could have a carbon group or a hydrogen group. Okay, so maintaining that central focus piece here, the carbon, oxygen, double bond, connected to a nitrogen, I've got lots of possibilities for amid. Okay. Amids are very important because amids are the links between proteins in carboxylic, in, in, uh, in, uh, in links between amino acids in, in, in proteins. Okay. So the amid bond is a very, very important, important bond in biological, biological chemistry. Um, amids form, amids form, from the reaction of, not surprisingly, carboxylic acids. And amines, okay? So we get a quick look at that. Here's a simple reaction. We take a carboxylic acid, let's take our friend um, ethanoic acid, better known as acetic acid. So here is an carboxylic acid, and I hope you recognize that as a carboxylic acid. Again, why is it a carboxylic acid? Because it has that, first of all, this pattern. And then on one side, it's got the carbon. On the other side, it has the hydrogen. So that's definitely carboxylic acid. And then let's react that with an amine. So, for example, we'll take a simple amine. And I'm going to kind of draw this in a different way. There's our amine. So this is my carboxylic acid. Come on. A little pen problem here. Come on. Carboxylic acid. This is my amine. And notice a nice little combination here. That's the reason I drew them this way. If I look at the OH here and the H over here, I get a very special molecule, H2O. So carboxylic acids and amines like to get together to form H2O. And then what's left over is that we imagine that the nitrogen now comes along and it's missing a bond. The carbonyl group over here is missing a bond and they make a bond here to form a new molecule. Now the carbonyl is connected to the, to the nitrogen, and lo and behold, we have formed an amide by the reaction of a carboxylic acid and an amine. Okay. So there is our amide group. Okay. We'll talk more about that kind of reaction next when we talk a little bit about amino acids. Good.